Hey there, CPO here. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through the basic electronics setup for the E550. This is a really hard video for me because I want to show you every possible iteration of electronic setup that is you know, available to you. And the reality of it is, I just can't do it. It would be too long of a video and, uh, and too complicated. So you're gonna see how I'm setting it up and uh, I'm using an SBUS configuration from my FreeSky receiver. I'm using a Tyrannus radio, and I'm gonna show you a couple of options of how to connect the BEC uh, from your ESC, assuming you're not gonna use a receiver pack, uh, to um, either the receiver or the fly wireless controller. So with that said, if you're looking for help getting your E550 set up electronically, don't dismiss the fact that I'm not using the same electronics you're using. While you may uh, use different menu structure in your transmitter or a different way to connect your receiver to the fly barless controller, the fundamental principles are going to be the same. We're still going to be dealing with endpoints and channel reversing. So uh, don't, uh, don't skip over all of the transmitter stuff because it's not your transmitter, but rather look for the fundamental principles behind what I'm trying to solve. With that said, I'm not going to turn this into a Tyrannus how-to video, um, although I will give you some ideas on how I'm making the changes in my transmitter. I'm going to do my best to keep it concise. So let's get started. Since the Castle ESC does not come with connectors for the battery, the first thing I need to do is install my bullets. I'm using 4mm bullets that mate with my nanotech batteries. So let me get those put on first. Ta-da! Thanks to the magic of video, it's done. You'll notice I'm missing my label on the ESC. That's because it kept coming unpeeled anyway, so I just peeled it all the way off. It was getting annoying. All right, so I've got my ESC. Uh, I've got the GT 5.2 fly barless controller that comes with the kit. I'm using a FreeSky X6R receiver with the paddle antennas. I'm gonna leave those on, and I'll show you how I'm gonna mount those in another video. And then I'm using an S port connection to this battery voltage monitor. Again, I'll cover that later. But just to give you a primer, uh, I'll show you uh, what I have here. I have a, a balance port lead extension uh, affixed to this. And then when I get my battery in, I can just plug in the balance port and my transmitter will be able to receive all the cell voltages. But for now, let's get our ESC plugged into the motor. And Please note, I don't have the pinion set to uh, engage the main gear, so the motor can spin freely without any problems. And I'm going to plug my ESC into a channel that's receiving a throttle signal in my receiver so that I can calibrate the endpoints for the throttle. So uh, the low and high points, we need to calibrate that. Before we go any farther, it's important that you have your radio set up to successfully program everything. I've got an FBL set up flight mode. You can see I've got normal, idle up one, idle up two, but this FBL setup flight mode has linear pitch and throttle curves uh, to make sure that for all the calibration efforts we're doing, I'm not limited by any curves that I would have set. So following the instruction manual, just make sure you have linear curves for those things. All right, so I've got to put my radio into bind mode. And then from here, I'm going to uh, plug in the ESC and notice I have the BEC wire removed from the receiver. I need to hold down this fail safe or bind button as I give it power and that will allow me to successfully bind. And you can see I'm getting a successful blinky red light telling me I'm bound up um, and I can unplug everything and I'm good to go there. Now I can plug the battery back in and it's getting me a cell count for the LiPo. You can see that my receiver is properly connected, uh, but I'm getting a red flashing light on the ESC. That means I haven't calibrated the throttle endpoints. To do that, I want to verify I have full range on my throttle channel, channel 3 in this case. Then set my throttle stick to high position and plug in the battery. That first tone tells me the high position is set and the other tone tells me the low position is set. Now I can unplug everything. Now I'm going to connect the S bus 
port from the receiver to the fly barless controller. I'm just using a standard male-to-male -male servo wire. Make note of the ground pin on the receiver and the fly barless controller. On the receiver, it's on the top. On the fly barless controller, however, it's on the bottom. And we're going to go into the IMP1 port. And just remember, uh, the, uh, the ground is up on one and down on the other. So it may vary depending on what your circumstance is. But on the GT5.2, ground is down. Now we've got our receiver connected to our fly barless controller. We need to get the BEC to one or the other. And there's really two options. You can do uh, the throttle port for the ESC on the fly barless controller or you can do the uh, throttle channel on your receiver straight to the ESC. It doesn't really matter uh, it just depends on your personal preference. Here's what happens when you first power it on. You can see it doesn't indicate anything about a receiver. That's because we haven't told it what type of receiver. To control it there's a little touch panel on the side and if you scroll all the way up to the top and hold in the uh, logo area you'll get to the menu and you can scroll up and down. It's a quick double tap to select. It takes some practice. So the first thing I need to do is go into the receiver menu and select uh, SBUS. You can see there's a lot of different options of supported receiver types. But we want to do uh, SBUS compatible because that's the system I'm using. Uh, the other thing to note is once you're in SBUS you have two choices. You can either use the default or program your own uh, configuration by moving the sticks for the different channels that it's asking you for. So it asks for aileron, give it an aileron stick, ask for elevator, give it elevator, rudder, etc. I decided just to use the default Futaba channel order. So I set my receiver so that channel 1 was aileron, channel 2 was elevator, channel 3 was throttle, channel 4 was rudder, channel 5 is my gyro uh, setting for the swash, channel 6 is the pitch, and channel 7 is the gyro setting for the tail. That's the standard Futaba uh, order. If I wanted to use a different order, I could go through that stick method that I just showed you. A little bit later in this video, I will show you my basic transmitter setup so that you can see how I have those channels arranged in the Tyrannus. So the next thing we need to focus on is making sure that our stick movement is correct in the fly barless controller, that when we move the aileron, uh, stick that the aileron channel moves on the controller. The other thing is making sure that we don't have the channels reversed. And I found almost all of my channels, actually all of them are reversed that run to the GT5.2. And when you look at it, if there is a white box over the number, that means it's a negative number. If there's no white box, it's a positive number. And all of mine were backwards. And also you can see I've got to adjust some endpoints because I'm hitting you know 124 and negative 124 so I need to get that to be negative 100 and positive 100 with a center point of zero so do what you need to do in your transmitter to adjust your endpoints in mine is a combination of the mixes screen as well as the servo screen so that I can uh, get everything where I want it and while I'm doing this I will talk about the gyro settings the manual recommends setting them at 100 and if you want to put it on a switch set it for 160 when the switch is flipped that way you can basically trim down the gyro setting if it's too robust from the start you could make this complicated and put it on a knob or make it some more uh, finite adjustability but for me right now I'm just gonna go with a switch that puts it on 100 or 60 here's a look at my servo screen that shows what I had to do to get everything set up along with the mixes and you can see all of the inverted uh, channels and as I mentioned before every single channel I had running to the GT 5.2 had to be reversed the only one that's not reversed here is channel 3 which is throttle and that's because I'm running the throttle straight off of the receiver and here's a quick look at my mixes screen I'll give you a better look here in a few minutes All right, so looking at the GT5.2, now that I have everything set up, all of my centers are at zero. All of my endpoints are at either 100 or minus 100. The only exception to that being the throttle channel, which is negative 124, positive 124. That can stay the same. Actually, you want full throttle. Uh, it just passes through anyway. 
And then my switches for my gyros are at 100 and as close as I can get to 60. I think they both ended up at 61. And all of my uh, sticks move in the proper direction. Again, throttle is the only one that you don't need to set a specific endpoint. It's just passed through to the ESC, regardless of whether or not you have it connected to the 5R controller or the receiver. So something I want to make sure I call out is the fact that the ESC will initialize and the motor becomes available to spin the blades before the fly barless controller is actually initialized. Which means to me that you can have spinning blades but yet no control over the helicopter uh, with regard to servos. Now it doesn't matter if it's plugged straight into the receiver or if it's plugged in through the fly barless controller. Here I invert my channel so that I can plug the ESC straight into the GT 5.2 and you'll see here the exact same behavior. Again, I have motor but I don't have servo control because the fly barless system has yet to initialize. I'm not sure if that's common. My uh, Robird G31 doesn't act that way so I'm not sure if that's normal or not but just be aware of it. I'm gonna definitely keep a watch on that. Alright here's a quick look at my radio settings. You may want to put this in high definition and full screen to see it all but uh, for those of you interested here's what I have going on so uh, basically really standard default stuff uh, nothing on the heli mix screen uh, no heli stuff uh, here are my flight modes I've got my normal flight mode idle up one uh, idle up two these are all switches and uh, you will notice I have this uh, flight mode that is fly barless setup Again, uh, that's just a switch that sets everything to linear throttle and pitch curves so that I can do all of my setups the way I need to. The stick screen uh, just has the uh, various rates and expos for the various flight modes. And then of course here in the mixes screen is where all the magic happens. You can see my channels uh, 1 through 7 are the ones that are going to the uh, through the S-Bus port to the Flybarrows controller. I do have a throttle hold set. Uh, I always do that uh, on my throttle channel. And actually I have it set so that on the uh, switch warning it will warn me if throttle hold is not engaged. So I can't even turn on the transmitter unless throttle hold is on. And then uh, my curves are all set down below in the channel 17, 19, 21, uh, 22. That's where all that stuff is kind of done. I like to keep it clean and uh, have my curves done in the uh, the higher registers where I can do some mixing. Uh, but uh, you know, curve one, two, three uh, are my standard uh, curves for the throttle. Uh, and then uh, on uh, four, five, and six, those are my curves for the pitch. And then uh, you can see what I've got my uh, channel 19 and channel 23. Those are the gyro uh, settings what those are set at. And then of course I also have that fly barless uh, setup curve which is curve 7 uh, which is just linear. Here's a look at uh, how my servo screen ended up being. You can see all the uh, inverted or reverse channels. Here's my curves. Curve 1 linear. Curve 2 uh, is a uh, you know straight throttle. Uh, curve 3 is a little bit higher than that. Curve 4 is uh, normal pitch and then curve 5 and 6 are uh, 3D pitch and then 7 again is a linear so I'll probably change these later but for now that's kind of my starting point I've got nothing going on with custom switches uh, I've got nothing in custom functions right now uh, I haven't set up anything else like that this is just the basics to get me started with programming uh, this heli and, and the fly barless controller alright so we're at the tail end of this um, I do want to point out that this GT 5.2 was supposedly pre-programmed with all of these settings for the E550 as a matter of fact the instruction manual tells you all over the place that it was pre-programmed at the factory uh, however I uh, jumped into the fly barless uh, settings just to check things out and I noticed that the swash plate was set for 120 degree swash rather than the 140 degree swash that it should be for this particular heli. So that gave me some great concerns. Uh, it turns out that the uh, GT 5.2 was not pre-programmed properly for the E550. Uh, it comes with a configuration table, a piece of paper with all the settings on it, 
Uh, and it turns out that it's pre-programmed for the E325 or E360. So basically what I ended up having to do is go through and manually set everything uh, to match the parameters laid out in the E550 manual. So here's the swash uh, menu and here I have to change it to a 140 uh, with swash type of 1. But at any rate, I'm not going to go through this whole thing with you, uh, but just know that you're going to need to verify that every single setting matches what is uh, laid out in the manual for the E550 because I believe that they had them pre-programmed for some different helis. Perhaps this is old stock or something like that, and they just threw them in the box. Uh, and I thought I was the only one that had this problem, but I have heard from others who have had a similar problem. That leads me to the question of whether or not the ESC is actually pre-programmed as they say it is. So I would also recommend going through the ESC setup just to make sure you understand exactly how it's set up, because at this point, I don't trust that things are pre-configured uh, the way they're supposed to be. All right, well, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Like I said, it's really hard for me to not try and go through every possible iteration we could go through. Uh, but the reality of it is, it's just, it's not going to work out. So um, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to hit me up or uh, go get the, the full GT 5.2 manual. It doesn't come in the kit. I don't know why. They give you a quick start guide, which is useless. Um, so, it, you know, finding the manual, it's on the Thunder Tiger website, buried somewhere. Um, it took me a while to find it, so I actually grabbed it and put it on my website. Uh, I put it on uh, everythingcpo.com. You should be able to find it if you go, uh, you know, do a search for the E550 or go to the E550 build page, you can find the manual there. Um, I highly recommend grabbing the manual and looking at it. It tells you every single setting in the in the controller and what it does, what the icon looks like, all of that. It'll make things easier for you. But uh, anyway, next video, um, I'm going to uh, show you the final installation of all the electronics, how I routed all the, the wire, where everything went, and then we're going to uh, install the servo arms and, uh, and set up our servos and uh, deal with the sub trims there. And we're pretty close to being able to, uh, to maiden the heli. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.